So this uh, video is about interactive worksheets in obviously um, Excel. So why would you want to do something like this? I'll, I'll show you how, how it works first. Let's say someone's done a titration uh, in the lab and they filled it up to three, that's their starting volume. Then the final volume, they say 24. Uh, well, what was the volume? It's 24 minus three, it's 21, isn't it? Well, tick, check that. Uh, what are the exact HCl concentration? Let's imagine it was two, three, five, or something like that. I'm just gonna make this number up. Well, how many moles is that? Well, we can actually do that in Excel, really, because we can just type equals, and we know that it is the concentration times uh, the volume. Ah, except it's not quite that. You have to convert to decimeters. Those units are incompatible. So let's do that C7 cell there. 21 divide that by a thousand return that correct answer so this is really no different to tapping it into a calculator except that maybe if you actually let's do 24 minus 3 as well uh, you, except you want to come back and change that it'll all recalculate it for you so this is kind of a halfway point between kind of setting up a spreadsheet to do the data analysis for you and kind of assessing it at the same time. So it's gonna be checking the calculations. And the main reason to use something like this is because when you say ask an online quiz to do it, usually students can't upload their own data and check it. Most of the kind of the online quiz formats on virtual learning environments uh, like Canvas don't support that. You'd have to go for a third party tool anyway, and that might involve some kind of complex web hosting or programming. And that's a bit of a pain. So, you know, this this is a nice visual way with a good interface that lets you just, you know, do it kind of natively on a computer. So that's why you'd want to use it, and this is how it works. Uh, and, you know, it, it's all right. You need to be a little bit careful about what order you present things in and what feedback you give and rounding errors, but we'll discuss that a little bit as I go through how to build one. So I'm not going to build a complicated one in this tutorial. This is just going to... Uh, lay out how I would start one and then a couple of hours later you just throw features at it, three features at it and you play around with it and you get something quite complicated out. So uh, let's just do the titration. So let's just say we're going to label a couple of rows. We want starting point, I want ending point and then the titra calculation. So three things and I'm going to right align those and then I want the numbers to appear here. Uh, and then I'm going to put the units in. So centimeters cubed, centimeters cubed. Uh, choose milliliters, go back and format that subscript as you like. Well, I'm not going to do that here. Um, and in the middle, I want to indicate that someone should fill this bit in. So I'm going to highlight the three cells, go to not conditional formatting, the cell style section, and just select input. Uh, now it jumps out at you. And if you go to view and remove things like the grid lines and the the headings. Now it starts looking a bit more like a worksheet that you you fill in. And if you highlight these and right click, you can go to format the cells. And there's this thing here that says protection. Normally it'll jump up to number, but I was playing with this earlier. And you just tick locked or untick it at least. Now normal cells are going to be locked. These input ones aren't. So if you go to the review tab and click protect sheet, Unselect the select lock cells, let them select the unlocked cells. Okay, that suddenly no one can play around with any other coding that you're going to do. They're not going to break anything. They can only m manipulate the input cells. So let's unprotect that and put the rest of the stuff back on. Right, so now it looks like a spreadsheet again. Okay, so the thing about this is that you need to be able to understand how someone's going to manipulate the data and what they need to do. And you kind of calculate it behind the scenes, you hide it away, and then you compare it and then make it tick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put off in this cell some off to the side the actual calculation we're gonna do. Um, I'll put some sample data there just to make sure it looks right. So it's going to be the end point minus the starting point. That gets us our title. It should be 22. So we want to compare this number to that one. And I'm going to stick 22 there. Uh, and what's the, well, the easiest way to compare two numbers is simply equals. And 
the two cells next to each other. So is C4 equal to F4? A statement like that will simply re return true or false. If I miscalculated that, I thought it would come out as false. If I keep doing that, uh, and so on. So that's fine. That works pretty nicely. But I want to do something a little bit more fancy with this. So I'm going to type in if, and if, if C4 equals F4, if that is true, I want it to t uh, return 1, and if not, 0. Uh, now that seems a little bit redundant if you know a bit, ex a bit of Excel, because true and false often evaluate as 1 and 0 if you're using maths on it. But for conditional formatting, it kind of doesn't that. So we're going to make sure that it says 1 or 0. Um, you could, if you're getting more complicated, use 1, 0, and 2 for like maybe a correct or nearly correct answer. We're just keeping it simple for now. So I'm going to come to conditional formatting uh, and create a new rule just on that cell. And we're going to format the cells based on its value. I'm not going to do a cover color scale. I'm going to do the icon sets. So an icon set, just flag up an icon depending on the number. You do need to change a couple of the defaults on this. So I'm going to go by the exclamation marks and the tick marks here. Uh, make sure to change the type to straight number, not a percent. By default, uh, this icon set is like the top third of your data will be green, then the middle third will be yellow, the bottom third will be red. You don't want that. You want it to evaluate uh, the number. So when it is greater or equal to one, I want it to be green. Uh, when it is well, greater or equal to zero, yeah, I'm going to set that as red. Uh, you could make this more complicated if you want the three but we're just going to stick it as two for now. I'm going to OK that. And what you can see is when it is the right answer, there's that green tick. If I put the wrong answer, it's uh, an X. It's the wrong answer. Value it's a zero. Now, I'm going to go back into the conditional formatting again and edit that rule. And I'm going to click Show Icon Only in the middle. OK that. Apply it. And what you can see is that just gets rid of the number. Um, it just replaces the data with just the conditional format icon, uh, which is really useful because that now becomes formatable, or partially formatable, and we can center it. So if that is the wrong answer. That is the correct answer, number 22. Yeah, that's going to be ticket. If I put 23, it's wrong. Now, here's the question. If I leave that blank, that's correct. I haven't put in a correct answer. So it should be X. But what if I just presented this blank? Let's get rid of the data here. Suddenly, it's marking it as correct. But you know, that's, that's technically true. This is what we told the computer to evaluate. This is blank. That's zero. Blank equals zero in computer terms. So we need to um, kind of evaluate this a little bit more precisely. We don't want any of the hints or evaluation to trigger until there is an answer to actually evaluate. So I'm going to edit this formula a little bit. Let's push it over here and just work here. Now, so the first thing I want to do is if uh, is blank. So is blank, hit the tab there to auto complete it. Uh, and I want to see if that value C4 there is blank. If that is blank, What's my true value? Well, it's not going to be 1 or 0 because I don't want a thing to appear there at all. I mean, I could stick 0 in if I wanted to. Um, but I'm going to have just two quote marks, uh, and that will fill it with nothing. Now, if false, if it isn't blank, it's worth, worth keeping that always uh, in your head properly. If it's not blank, it's got an answer in. I wanted to evaluate an answer, so I'm going to go if if that C4 is equal to F4, then 1, 0, and then close that. And what we can see is it's now blank. It is not going to stick a, a number on unless I've calculated an, uh, an actual answer. There we go. So that's basically all that really needs to happen after that is you to hide this. And the easiest way to hide your answer is to simply put uh, it as white text. You, go. you can get rid of it that way. Uh, sometimes I leave them as lightish 
where has it gone? Lightish gray and then hide it with uh, a graph or something. So something might be hidden behind a little graph. Um, and that just means if I'm troubleshooting it, I just need to move it out of the way. Another option is if you highlight your column, control shift and to the right, you can hide the whole thing away. Let me do that again. How do you do this? It's always, um, always awkward to do that. Unhide it again. So <coughs> <coughs> that's it. Um, and that's how you would start an interactive web sheet. Um, oh, an interactive worksheet, sorry. Um, maybe it could be done better on the web, but this doesn't require the hosting, I suppose. And you can build on it from there. So instead of this, I'm going to write a calculate Titra there, for instance, and then if it's blank, it gives me an instruction. And usually I will do uh, maybe cell style, so that looks like that. Um, now, once we get rid of the grid lines and the headings, now it looks like kind of a worksheet, especially if I then go to review and protect the sheet. I can't change anything. All I can do is manipulate my answer and see, can I calculate it correctly? 